the armour of David. Um, so I'm not going to go into this in, in great detail except to say King Saul had all of the mighty armour, just as Goliath had all of the mighty armour. David's just a shepherd and he's just dressed with shepherd clothes and he just had a shepherd's staff and a sling. That's all David had. And Saul's got the sword, he's got the shield, he's got the armour. And so Saul is saying, okay, if you want to fight Goliath, you're going to at least need to have the, the modern technology armour and weaponry here. And so here it is, all that the world can offer you to defeat the Antichrist, you know. Media, money, power, position, armies, whatever you need to defeat the Antichrist, here it is. And, and here is the church, you know, we've got our little staff and we've got our, our slingshot and shepherd's clothes. You know, in the present elections, well, we've got we've got mightier weapons. The, our weapons are mighty in God to destroy strongholds of darkness. Yes, <clears throat> we don't fight with the weapons of this world. We've got prayer, and we've got prophetic declaration all the time. David is prophetically declaring who God is, and he's declaring his intention to come against mm. this Goliath. Uh, that's pro prophetically declaring your intention in God. Um, <clears throat> Got to learn how to rehearse these things at home too. You know, David was rehearsing. I, I think he was because I used to live with shepherds in Tibet, and they always would rehearse mm. with their sling and stone before they actually had to face a wolf. That's it. Yeah. They don't suddenly go, oh, "There's a wolf! I can't better start practicing." <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't it? That's why you're laughing. That the thing is, you rehearse your war against the devil before it even happens. You, re you rehearse, this is what I'm going to say when he comes. This is what my declaration will be in the Lord. This is, I'm going to start worshipping God and focus on God before the battle. So when I get into the battle, I know my God and I can do a mighty exploit. Mm. Preparation. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of uh, mm. peace. It says preparation before the war. So... Saul's armor is put on David, but it doesn't fit David. And there's a whole reasoning for that. We'll go into that next week. But David tries to walk around. It's like he's uncomfortable. It doesn't fit David. Saul's armor was for Saul, and it didn't work for Saul either. Because it's not the armor. It's not the money. It's not the media. It's not all that this world has to offer to make you a big church or a famous Christian. You know what it is? It's your heart. That's it. Yeah. And having a heart after God's own heart, but then being faithful in the wilderness looking yeah. after this sheep and being faithful yeah. when everyone despises yeah. you and being faithful when you're not recognized and you don't have power yeah. and position, but you be faithful and you fight the battles that God yeah. puts you into. That's the key. Yeah. So David couldn't wear Saul's armor and he, he takes it off. He says, it's, it's not comfortable for me. It's, it's the armor of the flesh. That's what it represents. We'll look at that next week. The armor of the flesh, the armor of the things of this world, all that would make a man successful in this world, and it doesn't suit David. That's it. What suits David is what he was used to. In all of those insignificant years, God was preparing him for this day because what he was trained up in and what he learned to become comfortable, the skills that God gave him. God gives you skills in the secret place. You wonder why. What am I doing? You know, photocopying in this office all the time. It's so boring, you know? you know. What am I doing having to answer these emails and send them out? No, 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 no. These are skills that God's anointing can come upon and then you can slay Goliath with them. Mm. Understand, what are your natural skills? God can use that in powerful ways if they become anointed. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. And he took uh, his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones from the stream and he put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag and his sling and in his hand he approached the Philistine. This is where the spring is. David descends from the mountain where all of these people are in the high place, you know, singing all of their high praise praises or whatever it is. We believe in God, we believe in God. He comes to the valley of humility which is the valley of confrontation. Mm. And then when he comes to the stream in the valley, he goes to the low place and then he picks up five small stones. And we talked about that. He knew that Goliath has four brothers yeah. and they're all giants. Yeah. One of his brothers has six fingers and six toes. <laughs> like, it would look really weird. So David's not just now preparing to slay Goliath. He's, he's preparing for a war against the Nephilim, the giants of the land. He's, he's preparing for a war. And he knows, when, what do I start this day? Because the ancient custom was there was a thing called the avenger of blood. Yeah. And if someone kills your brother, then you are bound by like the culture to seek vengeance. 
And so the brothers would all come after whoever killed the brother. And, and David knew that. He'd have to face not one Goliath, but he's going to have to face four more. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And they're all going to come after him. And so he knew, what I do this day is going to unleash hell against me. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a really cool book. And, I, and sometimes I like the names of books more than the books. I actually read some books got very disappointed because I was so inspired by the name. But it, it, was, it was this, you know, when all hell breaks loose, all heaven draws near. That's why, G, that's why David could say hallelujah. The more hell breaks loose against me, heaven will draw near. Amen. I'm going to get to know my God even better. Amen. So David takes the five smooth stones, goes off the face off against Goliath. Meanwhile, verse 41, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to David and he looked David over. He's looking David up and down, you know. And he saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome. And he despised him. And he said to David, am I a dog? Come on, what do you think I am, a dog or something? You come against me with sticks. The Philistine then cursed David by his gods. That's what Jezebel did with Elijah. Mm. This is what happens. This is what the occult's doing against the church right now. I can, I can guarantee you. I know in my past I knew people in witchcraft and occult. In Tibet, they're all involved. They curse the people of God. They curse the leadership. They, pr they pray that, that pastors will fall into adultery. They pray that the children of the leaders will fall into rebellion. They literally are cursing the children of the past. Make sure you pray for my marriage. Make sure you pray for my kids and pray for all in leadership. You know why? Because all hell comes against leaders. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, strike the shepherd, scatter the sheep. Mm -hmm. He was quoting something. The enemy always goes after leadership. That's why the Bible also says pray for all of those in leadership, mm -hmm. including governmental leaders, by the way. Mm -hmm. So he's cursing David because he's trying to do what Jezebel did to Elijah. He's trying to put fear into the heart of David to weaken the hands of David in warfare. Satan will always do this. He, if he can put fear in your heart, he weakens your hands and you can't finish your task. That's it. But if we learn to hear the voice of God and we keep rehearsing, as David keeps rehearsing his testimony and declaring who God is, what was David doing? He's speaking the truth of God into his own heart to strengthen his heart and therefore strengthen his hands in battle. That's why you don't go around complaining and murmuring and, 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 and being negative in what you say, but you praise God and you thank God and you declare the word of God. You strengthen yourself so you can finish what you've started in God. Hallelujah. Now this is David's response. Because Goliath saying, I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And this is David's response. You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The, the Hebrew there is not Lord Almighty, it's the Lord of hosts. I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord of the angel armies. It's not just me. The angel armies and the Lord, the commander of the angel armies is with me. And with the power of the angel armies, I will defeat you this day. So I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord of the angel armies, the God of the armies of Israel, that you've defied. And this day he will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. What was David saying? He didn't even have a sword. He's just got a couple of stones. How is David going to cut off Goliath's head? Because David's there going, he's eyeing Goliath's sword already. He's like, that's going to be my sword. That's mine. In Jesus' name. I could teach him some messages on that one, I'll tell you what. The cross. Jesus looked at it. Satan's weapon against him. And Jesus looked at it and goes, that's going to be my sword. I'm going to conquer hell and death and Amen. Satan through this thing. What are you facing? What's your cross? What's your battle? Can you look at it and eye it off and say, that's going to be my sword. I'm going to use this thing to defeat the powers of darkness and I'm going to see people set free and healed because of this thing. That's the eyes of faith. David has eyes. He's a seer. He has eyes of faith. That which most men think, I'm dead, you know, I'm finished. That's how most men are thinking. He's going, woohoo, this is my key to my future destiny. Hallelujah. This day, the Lord is going to hand you over to me 
and I'll strike you down and cut off your head today. I'll give you the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. It's not just you. I'm going to get the whole Philistine army and you're all going to be dead meat today in Jesus' name. All those gathered here will know when this happens. Now, this is the key point. When this happens, all those that gather here will know that it's not by the sword 